or homework questions that are not sure about or whatever? No? Yes? Um, the lymph node itself does not produce antibodies, but the cells in it do. What's the question? Do all the following accept? Oh. So, uh, so because they can Yes, because they contain B cells, that become plasma cells and produce antibodies. Does everybody hear that? So there's a question about what do lymph nodes do? And the short version is lymph, lymph nodes don't have anything to do with nutrients. Okay, so, um, but they do, because they contain B cells and plasma cells, they do produce antibodies. So there's a freebie for it. Okay. <laughs> uh, respiratory system. So unlike our first, you know, the, or the last two chapters, three chapters, well, this unit, the second unit, is a mixture of different topics, right? So we talked about um, blood and the cardiovascular system, that was unit one. But then unit two is made up of a mixture of things. Um, <clears throat> well, we did blood and endocrine, sorry, and then we did cardiovascular um, and uh, immune system, and then this is the last piece, the respiratory system. So they don't really have anything to do with each other, um, but that's kind of how this second semester goes, where the chapters are usually very separate, except for the blood cardiovascular um, connection there. Okay, so like so many things, we start out talking about the organ system by dividing into pieces, right? And that's because the different parts of a single organ um, or organ system always do different things. So for the respiratory tract, we divide it into upper respiratory system and lower respiratory system. And this is the most common division clinically. You know, so when you're working with patients, this is pretty much how it's divided. Now you get into certain specialties like pulmonology and they'll divide it up in different ways. But this is the system we're going to use. So the upper respiratory system is Anything above the larynx is the upper respiratory, and anything below the larynx is lower respiratory. Now there again, where the boundary line is varies depending on who you ask. You know, some people will say the lower respiratory system is everything underneath the clavicles. So they would include the, the uh, larynx in the top part of the trachea in the upper. But for our purposes, it divides here at the larynx. All right, so. What we have there, we have the nasal, the nose, and the nasal cavity, and we're going to talk more about this in a minute, but I want you to see and pay attention to how far back the nasal cavity goes. Something about the way our brain is wired in terms of how we sense our respiratory tract, this part of the respiratory tract is fairly invisible to us consciously. Okay, so we're not really aware that we have this air cavity that sits above the roof of our mouth. But it's there, and it takes up a bunch of space. Okay, so most of the sensation from the nasal cavity, this box-like structure over the top of the mouth right here, the, sens the sensations for that region are referred anteriorly. So, you know, we say, oh, I have a stuffy nose. And it's not really that your nose is stuffy, it's not that your nose is full of mucus, it's that the nasal cavity behind it is, you know. But if you ask people to point to where their congestion is, they'll point here or they'll point here, but they don't point behind their nose, right? So it's a referred sensation. Um, and I have some great pictures from the book of what this looks like in cross-section. So we're going to talk a lot about the nasal cavity here. Because you see that the, the nose itself, with this angle, you know, hold your glasses up, right, only makes up a tiny little fraction of this whole cavity of space. Okay, so more on that in a minute. Off to inside the bones of the skull are the sinuses that we talked about last semester. They are technically part of the respiratory system too because they perform some of the same functions as the nasal cavity, and that is to warm and humidify the air 
And our sinuses act as part of our vocal system too, because they make resonant chambers for sound to vibrate. Just like an acoustic guitar has a big open space that makes it sound a particular way, well, we have these open spaces in our skull that does the same thing for our voices. All right. And then uh, down in the back, behind the mouth, is the pharynx here. The pharynx is shared between the digestive tract and the respiratory tract. So both food, liquid, and air all pass through um, the pharynx, particularly the oral pharynx right here. All right. But the respiratory system then comes down and goes anteriorly. So this guy has his head turned, right? So this is front, this is back at this plane right here. So air comes down and then it goes towards the front, towards the anterior part of the neck, and then it goes down into the trachea. So the airway is anterior to the esophagus, which is the digestive tract. And that comes up clinically because you know, airway is the A in ABCs, right? Many of you have taken a CPR class at some point in your life and you've learned about airway, breathing, and circulation. Without an airway, you can't have the other two for very long, right? If, you're not, if you don't have an airway, you can't breathe, and if you're not breathing, your heart's going to shut down, so you're going to not have circulation. So it's important to know where that airway is, and that airway is in the very front part of the neck, um, and it's... Uh, you know, you'd think that wouldn't be the best place to put it because it's not very protected. But the airway does have a semi-rigid cartilage that helps to protect it from damage. Um, but, you know, you can wiggle your, uh, your um, larynx around, or that, the cricoid cartilage anyway, or thyroid cartilage, so you can see that it's the most front part. So when we position somebody to have optimal airway, you know, we tilt their heads and we tilt them anteriorly so that the airway is more in line with the rest of the system. Okay, so airways in the front, always remember that. Because some of you, someday, are going to be putting uh, tubes into this part of the um, anatomy right here for the purposes of breathing for somebody. You know, an, an endotracheal intubation, we call that. So tubes in the front. From there, we get into the lower respiratory tract. So... This whole apparatus is the larynx. Now, in common language, larynx is, we call it the voice box, and typically we think of it as just being the vocal folds. But the larynx is actually this whole top part of the lower respiratory tract. More pictures on that later. From the larynx, we get down into the trachea. The trachea is simply a rigid tube that goes down into the chest. It divides into the left and right uh, main stem bronchus, and then those air tubes disappear into the right and left lung. All right, so we're going to pick up this anatomy uh, later on, but that's upper and lower. So before we get into the uh, the details, I'm going to turn this light off. I think our projector ball is going because it's not as bright as it used to be. Right? And main functions of the respiratory tract. So top one is its principal function. You know, why do we need this system to live? Because the respiratory tract provides a huge, wet surface area that has a very thin membrane to allow gases, particularly oxygen and carbon dioxide, to exchange across, okay? And we'll see that that surface area comes at the level of the alveoli. So the alveoli is the functional unit of the respiratory tract. So that's its primary function, is have this very thin membrane, very, very large, spread out in a shape so it fits in the body, that is thin enough for gases to cross. Okay. So in order to have this top one work, we need to move air, because the air in the environment is relatively high in oxygen, relatively low in carbon dioxide, the air that we produce in our lungs from exchange is high in carbon dioxide, low in oxygen. So if we're going to continue to move oxygen in and carbon dioxide out, we have to move air all the time. We call that ventilation. Ventilation is the movement of air. So we breathe to ventilate, not to respirate. Okay, Ventilation is movement of air, 
restoration is